So the, the psychodynamic training is a new training um, launched in uh, September this year. Its formal name is the Clinical Qualification in Psychodynamic Psychotherapy. And um, this is a, a, a course, as you can see on the slide, which is a four year program, um, ultimately in two phases in terms of uh, clinical practice, which leads into qualification for once weekly therapy. So it's a course that um, for those of you who, who wish to apply for once weekly clinical training, but it's also a course which is a good way of judging whether counselling or psychotherapy is for you. Um, and finally, it's suitable, I think, for those who are interested in learning about applying psychodynamic therapeutic insights into everyday life and work. It has two clinical phases. Um, <clears throat> It's a voluntary placement in year one, followed by a psychotherapy placement in the NHS or other organizational setting in year two. Both of these are supported by our clinical placement tutor, Danielle Lloyd Edwards. In years three and four, you can apply to take on a training patient, which is sourced by our director of clinical services and also our um, once weekly low, low therapy scheme. Angela Marsh, who is our clinical uh, services director, will manage the process of, um, of actually taking on a training patient. And I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about what that looks like. But just let's take a look at analytic therapies in the first place and how they differ from other modalities such as CBT or DBT or CAT or the unique selling point, if you like, of all analytically based therapies is that analytic therapists do not focus primarily on diagnosis or on single issue presentations. We're good at understanding complexity and comorbidity and are taking a more multidimensional outlook, which is located in something called the psychosocial. We're also highly qualified in the different schools of analytic thought, of which there are a range. And so we can um, contribute to a curriculum that's essentially pluralist in nature, but which is also grounded in traditional values. And it embraces and explores the contemporary nature of psychoanalytic and Jungian analytic thinking and practice. But finally, the training, this particular training is focused on employability and set up for the workplace through a hybrid of both placement and training patient work. In other words, a mixture of private practice and work in a placement setting. The programme takes place on a Monday for years one and two, Monday morning for year one, and Monday afternoon for year two. Each of those have a theory seminar and a clinical uh, or work discussion for year one, who aren't actually at that time necessarily taking clinical patients. Um, and then year one is followed by an experiential group hosted by our two experiential group leaders. Year two also has the theory and the clinical seminar but instead of a formal experiential group, there are experiential group elements built into the curriculum, places, if you like, uh, for reflective thinking spaces, and um, also will be directed towards uh, attending a group relation conference or experiential group conference, because this is a very um, important, if you like, element to go through. Year three and year four take place on a Friday. Year three in a Friday morning and year four a Friday afternoon. Once again, there will be a theory and a clinical element for each of those year groups and no formal experiential group, but um, experiential group elements built in along the curriculum and also uh, an encouragement to attend a group relation conference. Looking at that in a little bit more detail, um, the most important element is to build and develop a therapeutic work that you're already doing, 
and or will do with your patients. So securing patients and training patients are um, therefore a priority for us and for you. This is a clinical course and as such predominantly requires the formal assessment of your clinical paper at the end of training. In the early years, the clinical seminars are taught. So you're uh, adopting a skill-based curriculum for um, year one, um, which will have 15 seminars of about 1.5 hours each. And that uh, is comprised of experiential exercises with discussion set papers that are relevant to each topic area that are covered with discussion, role play in various formats with a debrief, and then followed up by a work or placement discussion. The work or placement discussion reflects your, your um, honorary or voluntary placement um, in, in year one um, with a, an, an appropriate setting, not necessarily psychotherapeutic. In years two and four, those clinical seminars gradually are taken up by trainees and you present a vignette of an, uh, your clinical work. And those clinical seminars are in essence a masterclass um, where the group will have the opportunity to hear two trainees' presentations of their clinical vignettes and look and think about this as a group um, with with sort of um, in, in relation to um, some of the theoretical frameworks and constructs you've been uh, introduced to. So it's very much in years two and four um, trainee led. In terms of the theory, the theory curriculum, we view theoretical knowledge and curricula as both static and emergent. So while on the PD training, there is a balance between the traditional values of psychoanalytic and union analytic frameworks and the contemporary directions that these have traveled in um, that we'll be looking at on the program. We want to take time to craft the curriculum in a way that reflects your, your needs and, and your interests. So we want this curriculum to be co-produced. So although there are elements of the curriculum very much that are set, um, there'll also be the opportunity for trainees to co-craft the curriculum. We want to hear about what you have learned experientially and academically, the areas and topics that you would wish to see and cover in a modern curriculum, and the theoretical frameworks and papers that have already or may have already resonated with you. So this is an ongoing dialogue. So we include reflective thinking spaces early on in the programme in each year group for us to do so. But we also need certainty about the topics and areas that represent, if you like, um, your theoretical um, frameworks and internal supervisors. And these are, in a sense, specific to you. The, the engagement with theoretical papers and frameworks is a psychodynamic act, we think, in, in its own right. And so many of the aspects of the curricular and week, weekly reading lists are set as a sort of skeletal scaffold but you will be picking up, if you like, certain papers that really resonate with you. And that will be putting you along a pathway um, in which your direction as a psychotherapist becomes clearer to you. The experiential learning um, runs as a weekly group in year one, as I said earlier, um, and that's um, hosted by experiential group leaders. And then that experiential learning becomes more embedded, if you like, in elements in the curriculum throughout years two and four. And we strongly encourage trainees to attend a group relations conference, which is a unique event in its own right. Onward routes. So the clinical, clinical qualification in psychodynamic psychotherapy is a course for those, as I said, who wish to apply for clinical training for once weekly therapy. And the demand for um, once weekly therapy is, um, is really exponential uh, for various reasons, I think, um, in the last two to three years. So thinking about that in terms of us, the BPF as a membership body, we have um, a lifelong professional development ethos. So 
by joining the BPF, there are a number of unique features, I think, that are opportunities for you in terms of your crafting of yourself as a psychotherapist. So you'll have ongoing access to CPD, lifelong CPD, alongside a range of different um, groups and colleagues. So for example, that might be intensively trained colleagues, it might be child and adolescent psychotherapists, it might be uh, colleagues who have um, joined our and qualified from our once weekly union uh, analytic training, which my colleague Joe Duval will be talking about um, towards midday. So as a BPF member, however, you also have access to post-qualification resources and training, including invitations to take on patients from our low fee therapy scheme. We know from evidence that complex mental health needs are not fully catered for within mainstream services like IAT, for example, which are geared towards more mild and moderate depression. So within that, we also know that there is an acute widespread need for psychological support for people otherwise unable to afford the cost of professional psychotherapy and particularly marginalized communities who are currently being failed by mainstream services. There is evidence to suggest that some specific groups and communities, for example, low income, disabled, Racialized, racialized communities and those from the LGBTQIA plus are particularly needy. Disabled people also experience inadequate access to therapy support, aggravated by systemic barriers such as inappropriate delivery of service, poor referral processes, lack of specialist knowledge and inadequate social support. We want to work with these communities as part of the BPF expanded service and we may need to, and probably will, create some additional training for BPF members during and post-qualification in culturally sensitive practice in terms of working with these group, different groups. What we are looking for. What we're looking for, um, and the application will be via interview, are a set of entry requirements. Um, to do with professional experience and academic. So in terms of um, entry requirements, what we're looking for is prior psychodynamic, psychodynamic counselling or therapy course that you've taken to certificate level or equivalent, for example, um, a higher education certificate in psychodynamic counselling or its equivalent, and or relevant professional experience, for example, in nursing, social work, teaching, we're looking for a first degree or other evidence of academic ability and most importantly in this um, in this particular training this particular role we're looking for um, emotional resilience and maturity and the capacity for self-reflection there are however if i can go back to that slide there are um and I think some of your questions might um, be on this on this uh, on this route. Um, although we have that as our entry requirements for entry into our foundation year, that's the year one of the course. We have several questions from um, interested um, prospective trainees with regard to whether they can enter the program at different um, year at different years. And we we have, as Francis might um, be able to um, uh, confirm later on, we have what we call multiple entry um, points, if you like, or mid entry points. So we this all of our trainings have opportunities to, as you discover more about the kind of therapist that you want to be, if indeed you end up that uh, that you um, actually want to be a working psychotherapist, uh, you might find that union analytic um, frameworks are attracting you and resonating you with you um, uh, and you will have the opportunity then to to move through into one of our other trainings you might decide that actually along the way um, that it, it is an intensive analytic um, training that begins to suit you 
So direct um, entry, we've talked about entry into year one. Uh, we get a lot, lot of um, um, applicants who are interested in um, direct entry into year two. Um, and this is what we will do is to think carefully about the kind of experience and training that diploma or certificate from another psychodynamic or psychoanalytic training will um, equip that trainee with um, in regard to whether or not they can enter into year two. Um, so that is a conversation and a dialogue that we'll be having um, when, when and if you are thinking of applying to the psychodynamic training. Um, and the key questions, I think, will probably come up in a little while, but they would be along the lines of, was the training psychodynamic or psychoanalytic or Jungian analytic in nature? Did you attend a placement and or see patients under supervision? Was this a psychotherapy a placement, for example, in the NHS or, or other organisational settings? Um, did you accrue clinical hours? Um, do you have clinical supervisors reports? Was there a talk component for the clinical seminars or not? Um, was there an observational component or a, and or a work discussion group seminar? And we can come back to that in a little while. Apart from what we would like from you in terms of whether we think this is the training and you think the training is the right training route for you, how will we actually support you? We support you with a range of, um, of, of tutors and staff, both inside and if you like attached to, but outside the, the organization. First of all, your seminar leaders um, who will be working with you on the taught components of the of the training. Um, and if it's Gerald in years three and four, Danielle and um, Lloyd Edwards in years one and two. We will also have and be assigned a personal tutor with who this, who will be um, where you can take your uh, various, um, if you like, issues and concerns and or triumphs um, in terms of progress and insights um, and uh, as a first port of call for for that sort of um, that, that aspect of pastoral care um, in the training. The years one and two clinical placements as I've said um, are helmed by Danielle Lloyd Edwards Although it is um, you who will be sourcing your placement um, for obvious reasons to do with location and um, so on and so forth, um, Danielle um, will be helping you and guiding you and supporting you through through that um, through that uh, process. In years three and four, as I said earlier, Angela Marsh, our clinical services director. Um, you will be applying to take on your training patient from Angela, who works closely with Caroline East, um, the manager of our low fee therapy scheme, which is to do with widening access, which I'll be coming on to in, in a little while. The clinical supervision taught seminars are, if you like, masterclasses, but um, you'll be needing supervision at what we call the granular level. Um, so you'll be assigned to supervision groups of two to three, working with your clinical supervisors, um, uh, setting uh, negotiating a time um, outside of um, your, your teaching hours. We also have um, our librarians. Um, we have, a, as I said before, you'll become a member of the BPF. And so you'll have access to um, a lot of things, but one of the things that you'll have access to are a huge range of resources um, and um, library catalogues um, online and our librarians will be helping you. We also have a, a, a very well-stocked library um, and our librarians are excellent in helping you track down papers um, that you would wish to read or access. Each training has a training coordinator who manages your enrollment onto the course and a variety of other things such as record keeping and uh, fee paying and um, so on and so forth. 
And finally, we have our membership, uh, our training coordinator on the psychodynamic training is Nat Singh. Um, and uh, finally, we have Matthew uh, Aldridge and Danny Convey in terms of membership and communication. So we have a huge package of support in terms of people um, that can support you with various aspects of, of, of the course and of the experience. It's very important to the BPF to widen access to analytic therapies. In the past few years, particularly with COVID, the pandemic, we're seeing a tsunami, if you like, of patients who, who want to, um, who want to source a therapist and afford a therapist who is psychodynamically, psychoanalytically or Jungian analytically trained. So we're thinking very carefully about how to do that. And the launch of our low fee uh, once weekly therapy scheme um, is one of those mechanisms, if you like, that will, will allow the, the, the public to um, access psychodynamic psychotherapy in a supported way. And part of that is around training bursaries. We'll probably, not only do we need to access a uh, widen access for the public in terms of accessing psychodynamic psychotherapy, but we also need to widen access in terms of our trainees. We need our trainees to reflect the multicultural um, nature of our society in, in the United Kingdom and across the world. So although this will be uh, likely in uh, 2024, um, and only at the moment for entry level, we're probably going to, and we have um, secured tra training bursaries to support trainees from marginalized and racialized communities and the communities I talked about earlier to undertake the foundation course, in other words, year one of the training. Um, and as I said, we've planned and launched the once weekly psychodynamic training. So that we're hoping will widen access for those of you for whom, and many of us, uh, find training to be a hugely costly affair and is a barrier, um, low income is a barrier to that. We're also at the same time uh, looking at um, how to, uh, the process of accreditation with regard to accessing student loans is, um, is in process as we speak. So we're hoping that this will widen access in terms of attracting and supporting trainees from marginalized uh, communities to actually undertake our training. At the moment, as I said, the focus of the bursaries will be entry level, and it's about widening initial access to the profession for trainees from disadvantaged groups. You probably have quite a few questions. So, what I'm going to do now is to give you a few minutes to reflect and then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come into the question and answers box and see what comes up. Thank you. I'm just looking through some of the questions. And 
Sheila, have you got, can you see the questions, the Q&As? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm just looking through and I'm going to... Oh, okay. Them. Beg your pardon. Just going to pick one or two that... I'm just looking through the questions for everybody. I'm just going to pick one or two that seem thematic. Um, Brilliant. So I can't answer all of them, but um, I'm going to pick the ones that I think um, most people are asking. Some of the um, let's let's start with um, some of the questions about is the course accredited? The course is, uh, will be accredited by the British Psychoanalytic Council, um, and you will become a member of the BPF and therefore a registrant of the BPC. Um, you will continue your membership of the BPF and therefore your registration with the BPC. That is a requirement for a continuing post-qualification practice. On that subject, there is another question I just want to... One of the questions from Anna is, are we qualified to practice after four years and do we need to undergo therapy ourselves while studying? If so, how often and can we decide the therapist? That's a really good question and I didn't cover that in my presentation. Yes, the most important element of any analytic training is your own personal therapy. Ideally, you would need to be in this at least a minimum of six months and preferably a year before applying. Um, and it would need to be with a psychoanalytic a training therapist needs to be a psychoanalytic or Jungian analytic psychotherapist, post-qualified at least five years. You um, enter into that uh, at least on a once weekly base basis, usually twice weekly. And this lasts for as long as you are training, but many of us continue with our therapist after we've qualified. And some of us come back into therapy at various points in our professional career. Um, it is, um, as I said, the, the, the central core uh, element of um, becoming um, an analytic therapist. One of the questions more structural um, is, can you please confirm the timing of the training? Uh, I think you said Monday morning, I guess this must be a year one, a prospective year one applicant. Um, which will be problematic for work. Um, the website says the foundation course is a Saturday for study days. There is a little bit of confusion here because we have a foundation course called Psychotherapy Today, which is um, which which takes place um, on a Saturday, um, once a month, and um, that. And also has clinical seminars on a twice on a fortnightly basis um, or, or in an evening on a Monday or a Thursday at the moment. That course is going to feed into year two of the psychodynamic training. So if that course um, is the one that you're interested in, um, and um, Urvashi Chand, my colleague, is the director of that particular course, then that would allow you to move directly into year two of the psychodynamic training, uh, which is the course that I'm director of. Um, just going to read through a, a question or two. Um, a question about supervision. Please, can you clarify if supervision can be done remotely? Although um, this, this is, depends in a way on the, the supervisor and the group of trainees, many supervisors and um, trainees prefer in-person supervision. But this is a hybrid model and the supervisors that um, uh, deliver clinical supervision in the small supervision groups that I talked about earlier, which 
take place outside the teaching day um, can run a hybrid model. So they can decide whether that's online because it suits that particular group of trainees or in person. I've answered the question about BPF membership, but if you're a BPF member, and, and Matthew, my colleague, Matthew Aldridge, who's head of membership of communications, um, the, it, your access to the resources and documents, our online library, and all the facilities that the BPF can offer does not expire um, after, after you graduate. As a member of the BPF, you have access to all the full range of the resources and training that we can offer. I'm just looking um, uh, for uh, an answer to a question um, around what if your background in terms of uh, before you apply uh, is not uh, in, in the, um, the criteria that we were talking about earlier? And remember those criteria were a prior psychodynamic or counseling therapy course to certificate level at least, relevant professional experience, for example, in nursing and social work or teaching and either of those so it, it the application is right via interview um i think it's important that you if you can um get an, an understanding of what it's like to work with people not necessarily directly um we do consider experiential learning such as experience in nursing or social work or teaching but it runs concurrent with your academic uh, explorations with regard to certificates in psychodynamic counselling or psychotherapy that you might have taken before. We're looking at an interest in you in terms with in terms of working with people in this particular way. So um, that is a, if you like, a a dialogue that takes place during during application, um, and which is also teased out um, in interview. But many of our trainees who are thinking about entry into the foundation year, year one of our training, um, will have taken on, if you like, a voluntary role, perhaps as a teaching assistant in a school or um, a pastoral, some sort of pastoral care. So they're getting an idea of what it is like to work with children, adolescents, um, people. Um, the, there's a question about what sort of clinical experience does one get in year one here? And um, as I said earlier, you as a first year trainee will source, you'll start to source an appropriate setting, a placement setting, um, guided, if you like, in terms of whether this is appropriate or not, by Danielle Lloyd Edwards, our clinical placement tutor. Um, and uh, that, that will not be you working directly with patients, um, because clearly, you, you know, you wouldn't have started um, on the course and even through year one. So, as I said, year one is a taught clinical, the clinical seminars are taught for the first half of the year at least, while you're thinking and moving and trying to get into perhaps your placement. Um, and then the, um, the, the trainee part of that, the sort of non-taught part where you bring in experiences and observations of the setting that you have joined, either on a voluntary or honorary basis, and that will become a work discussion group. So it, it's the preface, if you like, to thinking about how um, you would present work or vignettes when you eventually um, get into a, an honorary position in, a, in an NHS psychotherapy placement. Um, one of the questions is, um, is it possible to 
expedite. It's gone, yes. Is it possible to expedite the training and increase the days from once a week to two to three days a week? I think this is a really important question because I think it actually is relevant to many of the other questions in terms of when you attend and how much time. So when we start training, we often as prospective trainees look at the teaching days and think that's it. I just have to perhaps um, put aside a Monday morning or a Monday afternoon or a Friday morning or a Friday afternoon. And what we don't take into account is that this, the temporal requirement is much larger than that. It's usually about 15 or so hours a week. When you factor in um, your teaching days, your preparation and reading, uh, your personal therapy once or twice weekly, your clinical supervision outside of the course, and your seeing of your patients. So although it looks it, it looks like a part-time training, eventually, and more and more as you move through the actual years, you will find that it takes up <clears throat> probably at least half of your working week. And it's important that you at least begin to have an idea that that's going to be the case in order to see those four years through. So in terms of attendance of the, of the teaching, um, of the actual teaching seminars, yes, it's in person. Um, just looking through some of the questions. So um, I think that question answers um, other questions about, is it possible to do this online? And the answer to that is no, um, no at the moment. And that relates to another question, which is, you mentioned in-person open days. Is there any way we can get an experience of the courses, either through a one day in-person event or through access to any webinars? And that I think relates also to, I think the, the a question that actually faces all analytic trainings, that at the moment, the demand for this particular training is really very, very acute. It's, it's exponential. And we have uh, an in-person delivery of, of, for, for good reasons. Um, and we have a capacity in the building for a certain number of trainees. So we recognize that the demand is going to outstrip our capacity in, ter uh, in terms of delivering the training um, eventually. We don't know what that answer is going to look like, but we do know that in the past, and I've been director, program director of several other trainings, particularly during COVID, when we actually had to think about delivering our training exclusively online. So there isn't an answer to that question right now, but there's a sort of watch this space. We would have to think very carefully about in-person, online or hybrid. And at the moment, it's in-person on teaching days for the reasons I've outlined before. Okay, so there, are, there was a bit of confusion uh, about um, requirements for the general foundation course known as Psychotherapy Today and the Psychodynamic Foundation Year. Um, and I, I think that's something you need to go through to uh, Irvashi around um, the, the the sort of entry requirements that she would that she would have for the foundation course. Just scrolling through some of the. There's a question about what's the balance between Jungian and psychoanalytic ideas in the training. So both the foundation course psychotherapy today and year one of the um, psychodynamic training look at topic areas from both a Jungian and psychoanalytic perspective. 
um, where psychodynamically or psychoanalytically trained um, in this particular training, but we have uh, close connections, collegiate and collaborative with our um, colleagues. Um, for example, Joe DeWall's presentation in, a mo in, in at midday um, uh, with regard to the once weekly Jungian analytic training. So we do have um, Jungian thinkers and lecturers and um, elements um, in the course and running alongside each other every, you know, from, from day one. Um, one of the questions here is, is UK-based working experience necessary as we international students don't have? We, we also get this in terms of international students applying who've taken um, a year long or a sort of a certificate or diploma um, in, in the um, psychodynamic counselling or, or therapy. And also uh, work experience, clearly, in, in the, those countries that um, we, we come from. And so once again, um, it, it is for us to look at exactly what that experience was, exactly what that training consisted of, uh, whether or not it's recognised in the UK, and and make a decision together based about that. But we have got international students who have gone through that process. So our training is not out of bounds for you if you are a student applying um, as an international student with a with an, an idea of moving in, into London to begin your training with us. There's a question here. Um, I'm not sure about wanting to work in a clinical setting. Is this course really aimed at people who want that career trajectory? And this is a really interesting question because, as I said at the beginning of the, the, um, the training, when we enter a training such as this, as Nina Coulthart says, we are, if you like, a beach slouching towards Bethlehem. We, it is an act of faith. We don't know whether at the end of it, we will actually be a psychotherapist. We may not know at the end of it, whether we want to be a psychotherapist. Um, so this is a course which is, you know, which allows you to find out and explore those questions. It is a course for those who are interested in once weekly or applying for once weekly clinical training with a view to becoming a qualified practitioner at the end of four years. But it's also a good entry year for you to judge whether or not counselling and psychotherapy is for you. And it may turn out that it's not and that you go into a different direction. You might, for example, go in a research direction um, you might, for example, go in a direction where you use the uh, the things that you've learned to um, apply that psychodynamic or therapeutic insight into your everyday at work. And it relates to moving across into other trainings. For example, you might find that in the first year, um, and indeed the second, that it's Jungian ideas that attract you and resonate with you more, in which case using um, the modified entry scheme, um, you might decide that you want to move into one of our other once, once weekly trainings, for example, the once weekly Jungian analytic and vice versa. I'm just going to flip through a few more questions. I think we've got about five minutes before I hand over.
There's a question here, where would we look to secure our own placements normally? In other words, how do we gain access to professional services as an outsider to an organisation? The sourcing of your own placements is, is in a way, um, an index of your agency. Of course, we're going to be anxious when we're thinking, I'm about to start a training, I've got to source a placement. Um, but remember, you'll be guided and supported through this by our clinical placements tutor in years one and two, Danielle Lloyd Edwards, who has a full range of countless placement settings across the country. She will probably know many of the placements that you have identified in your location as being a potential. Um, and you can talk through your doubts and so on and so forth uh, with regard to Danielle and also how you approach them. But yes, for, for reasons to do with ge geographical location and reasons specific to you, you as a specific trainee, it will be for you to begin to research those, make contact with those, um, guided and supported by Danielle, if that's something you find that you need. Um, I've talked through um, the possibility of um, moving into directly into year two, for example. Um, once again, in the same way that you would provide evidence of your academic ability in entry into the foundation or year one of the course, you would be you would be um, asked to uh, submit transcripts if it's a training that we haven't, um, if it's an international training, for example, that we haven't. Uh, got a, a close um, connection with so transcripts and evidence of your clinical work and so on and so forth and together we can think whether um, this is the course for you and also which year um, you might be able to enter. But certainly those students who take the foundation course psychotherapy today will automatically be able to enter year two of the psychodynamic training. Three minutes. Um, another question. Um, there's a question which I can easily answer here now from an anonymous attendee who says, I'm interested in the Jungian track. How does starting on that track work? Well, I think very much ought to um, um, listen to my colleague uh, Joanne Duval's presentation at midday. Um, this is what the Open Day is about. It allows you to have a look at a potpourri of the trainings that we offer and get a better idea of whether you want to deepen that conversation with the head of training concerned. Um, there's a very interesting question here. It's quite long, um, but it's um, it's from an anonymous attendee. Um, and I think it relates to some of the concerns that you have about whether or not your professional experience and or um, pre pre-application training certificates were uh, relevant. Um, my professional background was not in a directly applicable profession. Uh, I was in headhunting and coaching. Oh, I have degrees in psychology, occupational psychology and organizational psychologist. Currently enrolled, enrolled on a foundation course with an, with an I just, it's just gone, with, a, with an integrative institution, but also attending an introductory lecture series at the Institute of Psychoanalysis. Um, wanting to move into the psychodynamic approach next September. Um, about to start psychodynamic psychotherapy with a BPC qualified therapist and will take up volunteering 
with a befriending listening organisation over the next year? Would this combination of experience be a good enough baseline to apply for year one of the pathway? And the answer to that is a definite yes. So we're now um, at the end of, um, of my particular part of the day. I hope that the rest of the day is, um, a, a, is a really good experience for you all. I thoroughly encourage you to attend the whole of the day so that you can look through some of the, the different training programmes and get a better idea at the end of today whether or not which pathway you want to take. And I look forward to a deepening the conversation with one or more of you um, if you do decide to apply for the clinical qualification in psychodynamic psychotherapy. So I'm going to say goodbye now.